people that show up uh, in person might come through the door right at six. So if we have people join us, totally fine. But I guess um, we'll get started since you guys are um, joined. So good evening and um, welcome to this year's very first 4-H Companion Animal Online Cat Club. Um, like I just said, for those of you turning tuning in at home, just let me know anytime throughout the presentation to speak louder, slow down, enunciate, whatever it is. Um, I'm not going to be offended. I want you guys to enjoy um, the material because I'm just as excited. Um, this is my first time working with Zoom as well as presenting with Google Slides. Um, so bear with me. I hope it all works out. Fingers crossed. Um, but <laughs> let's hope that it's New Zealand. So um, now for the informal greeting. Uh, you guys will find out very quickly how much I enjoy um, adding lots of silly, goofy um, pictures and videos, especially when they are of cats. Um, hopefully it will make the material more fun um, and interesting to learn. Um, and also I'm always, always, always looking forward to suggestions on how to make it better. Because as I said, this is my very first time teaching, especially long distance. So it's kind of weird talking to an empty room right now. <laughs> um, so I'm just picturing that you guys are in here. Um, and as always, just let me know if there's anything I can do to improve your experience. So my name, I don't know if you can see me. It's really weird. My name is Haley Kaiser. You can call me Miss Kaiser, Haley, whatever. It's all the same to me. Um, and I will tell you a little bit about myself. Um, so I am just like you. I'm also a student, um, but I'm starting my very first year in graduate school studying exotic animal reproduction. Um, so it's all kind of brand new to me, and I'm working under Dr. Lisa Carr as her student that helps um, for events like this, which is outreach and teaching kids about cats, which is awesome because I love cats. Um, so fun fact about me is that I used to be the Lincoln Children's Zoo crazy bird lady. So before I decided to pursue a master's degree, um, I used to be a zookeeper at um, Lincoln Zoo for about a year and a half, um, working as a zookeeper, but I did work in all sorts of other um, departments before that, and I absolutely loved it. It was awesome. I got to work with some sweet animals. Um, but like I said, I think the macaws, especially Mr. Elliot here, um, has a special place in my heart. Um, and I think now um, I want to introduce you to my cat because I love all animals. And obviously this whole entire club is about cats. And um, in high school, I was always joked as the crazy cat lady. And so now I'm slowly starting my collection of cats um, with these two boys here. So please meet Mr. Jenkins and Remington. And I'll tell you a, a little bit about them. Um, Remington, the white and orange cat, he's five years old. A fun fact about him is that he loves to go on walks. So he's an inside outside cat. He loves to go on walks with me and my dog. He doesn't need a harness. He just walks right along with my dog and he loves it. Um, a fun fact about Jenkins, he was rescued about a year and a half ago when he was a kitten. Um, and his favorite thing to do is playing fetch. So both my cats are dogs, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he'll play fetch with me um, hours on it as long as I will play with him. So now I'd like to take this time, since I told you guys a little bit about myself, I'd love to hear about you guys. So um, if you would kindly unmute your uh, microphones, I want you guys to tell me your name, where you're from, um, what your cat's name is, if you have one, I assume you do, um, and then a silly thing that they do. So um, Ava, do you want to start? Sure, Ava's on now. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Ava. Hi, I'm, Ava. We have two cats, um, Alvin and Oreo. Aw. What do they, they do that's silly? Um, they like to play with their dog. What kind of dog do you have? A rat terrier. Aw, so they're probably about as big as him, huh? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Where are you from? Bloomfield. Bloomfield? I don't know where that's at. Is that in Nebraska? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I'm glad you tuned in. Okay. Um, Abigail? Hi, I'm Abigail. 
Abigail. Hi. From Broken Bow. And I have two cats. Awesome. And what are their names? Hang on. Oh. Are you trying to show us a picture? Yeah. Oh man. Oh, my phone turned off. Um. Oh. But it's uh, Cookie is a tuxedo, and Poppy Fern is a tortoise shell. What's the other cat's name? Poppy Fern. Poppy Fern. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well. Uh, at the end of this, I'll have you guys send me a picture of your cats, and then we can show them off next week. How about that? Okay. Awesome. Well, I love to see them. Obviously, I love cats, and I love to see them. Hi. Welcome, guys. Oh. Are you guys here for Cat Club? Yes. Okay. Do you want to take a seat somewhere over there? So we're not no room too early. We were just getting to know each other, so obviously I'm talking to an empty room, <laughs> but I swear I'm not talking to myself there. Uh, we have Ava and Abigail joining us. Ava is from Bloomfield, and Abigail is from Broken Bow. So we just did our introductions. Would you like to introduce yourself? Wait, so they're online? They are. Okay. We're using a cool thing called Zoom, so they're tuning in from all over the state. Uh, hi. <laughs> What's uh, your name? I'm Andrew Frame. Andrew, do you have any cats? Uh, yeah, I have one cat, and then my mom found a kitty cat. A kitten. Oh. Yeah, it was a kitten that was abandoned, just in a bag, Aww. by her truck, in the parking lot of her work. So, so she saved that. Well, well, it's no. getting rehomed because oh. our other cat does not okay. appreciate well, the addition. <laughs> and what's your cat's name? Uh, Wicket. Wicket? Mm -hmm. Cool. And you guys are from Lincoln? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said your name was Andrew? Andrew? We're all, well, you're all A's. <laughs> I'm the only outsider here. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I can talk to someone instead of an empty room. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so uh, my name's Haley, by the way. Um, I'm a master's student working for Lisa Carr, um, studying animal reproduction, and we are just about to get started. So, let's see. All right, so we're going to talk about cat history and breeds. Um, we'll talk about the different theories as to how they became domesticated and we'll look at some of the popular breeds that arose from that domestication. So, first things first, what is a domesticated cat? Does anyone know the definition? Me? Uh, <laughs> okay, how about you? All right, uh, so the definition is a cat that has been tamed and that, yeah, but basically a cat that is tamed by a human. Very good. So uh, Webster's actual um, definition is to tame, so you started out very well, to tame an animal, especially by generations of breeding, to live in close association with human beings as a pet or work animal, and usually creating a dependency so that animal um, loses its ability to live in the wild. And that's actually kind of a key part of that definition. Um, so there's kind of this theory that our cats really domesticated because they are able to live on their own and aren't dependent of humans. Um, so that's always been an interesting conversation, I think. But whichever stance you have, we'll just pretend that they are domesticated for now. <laughs> so there are three different types of domesticated cats um, that I'm sure you're all familiar with, and we'll talk about them. So um, as many of you mentioned, you have cats, um, and the first kind of cat is an indoor pet cat. So my cat Jenkins is inside 100% of the time and I'm his owner. Then we have my other cat Remington who likes to be inside and outside. So he's known as an outside pet cat. Um, he does whatever he wants. So he um, still has me as an owner. He gets fed at home, but uh, he's inside sometimes, outside sometimes. He kind of has the best of both worlds. And then finally, we have stray and feral cats, which I'm sure you've all seen 
Um, stray cats may or may not have had humans um, as their owners at one time and then were maybe dumped like the orchid you were talking about. Um, but a lot of time, feral cats don't like humans at all. They're not used to them. Um, and that's probably why they are running the opposite direction anytime you see them. Do you have a um, question? I have one question. Would the third one also count as lost cats that haven't been abandoned and they do have owners, but they, you know, just are lost? That's a good question. I would probably categorize them as being an outside pet cat. Um, so maybe in a scenario where my cat Remington, who is outside, wanders too far, doesn't know how to get home. We'll talk about this in future presentations. He has um, identification on his collar. Um, so if he is lost, he's still my cat, and I still miss him, and he probably wants to be fed. Um, but he does have an owner. So I would say stray cats are different because their owners don't care if they're gone anymore, or maybe they intentionally left them somewhere. So good question. And for you, uh, tuning in, if you guys have questions, I did open um, this presentation on my laptop, as, as you saw, my name's Haley Kaiser. Um, so you can just ask a question there. I'll try to keep an eye out on it um, as well. One more thing I want to say is the stray and feral cats, um, they might like somehow get into a certain house. So, like if True. the door is open, they could run in and maybe yes. steal some food or something. So we hope that when they happens. still don't make yeah. them in indoor. It still yeah. doesn't make them in indoor. Or a pet. I know. <laughs> All right. So you may be wondering how on earth did we go from having our cute cats that we um, know and love so much? How are the ancestors to these scary like cats on the bottom here? And we will talk about them. So as I mentioned before, I love pictures and videos. Um, and I found this really awesome clip that kind of describes um, the domestication of cats. So let's play that. Oops.
Zoom, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I thought it summed it up very well, and we'll just kind of go over again what you just mentioned. So as you heard, domestication um, by evidence happened twice in two different places uh, with two different cat species. Um, so as he, oops, yeah, so uh, in the Middle East, as well as in Central China, the Middle East being um, dating back, uh, that's kind of when you hear that they're from Egypt and whatnot. But then this um, old China domestication story came out not too long ago, which was pretty groundbreaking. Um, but if you look at these two pictures, they obviously are very different. And um, although we don't talk about this breed um, in this presentation, do you know of a cat that kind of looks like the one on the right there? Um, you might not. Do you know? Well, I guess um, she does. I was going to say a lynx, but I don't A bangle. A bangle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so they have thought to, these guys actually went extinct um, given that evidence, but there are pets that look like this today. Um, but like he had mentioned, we think that um, our domestic cats, modern cats, come from um, the Felis Sylvester slide. Okay, so again, just to kind of cover what he mentioned, happened um, 9,500 years ago in ancient Egypt. Um, something I thought was kind of interesting is we always hear how they really worship cats there, and they actually had um, a cat goddess uh, that was half feline and half human called Bastet. Um, so they worshiped this goddess, which is kind of cool. Um, another thing the Egyptians did, they valued their cats um, so much, kind of creepily so, uh, that when they died, they were mummified. Um, and the Egyptians that lost their cats would shave off their eyebrows in mourning. Um, super <laughs> weird today. Um, and then if you uh, were found guilty of killing a cat, it was punishable by death. So kind of Ooh. interesting. So um, the Egyptians were very greedy. And they actually didn't allow you to take cats anywhere else because they just didn't want anyone else to enjoy these um, cute, cuddly creatures. So, kind of fun fact. And then as for the Chinese domestication, uh, they said they found ceramic storage containers at the excavation site. Um, and they believe that because there was grain there, there are going to be a lot of rodents. And then that's probably why they found a lot of intact um, fossils from cats. The only difference was the jawbone. Um, which is why they don't believe they're related to the Sylvestris libica. Um, and again, these guys were thought to be domesticated um, because the, they had special treatment, um, not butchered for eating, and they were also found with humans. Um, however, none of the leopard cat genes are shared with house cats. Uh, they were on the road to domestication, but for whatever reason, this didn't survive. And another short little video to kind of discuss how our beloved cats went from helping us keep down um, the rona population on farms to laying on our sofas, not paying rent. So let's learn about that. Oops, gosh dang it. There we go. All right, so that kind of brings us to our, ah, I'm bad at this, okay, 
That brings us to our next activity. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played Kahoot. You have? Yes. Awesome. Um, Ava and Abigail, have you guys ever played with Kahoot? Yeah. Yay. Okay. Um, well, I haven't, so let's hope that this works. I just heard how fun it was. Uh, you know how to operate it? Okay. I might have to call you up here. I can't figure it out. Uh, but I made this. So there is a game that we're supposed to play. Um, so let's give it a go. Okay. Um, so you all have, correct? Do I need to explain how to get there? Uh, oh. And for a nickname, you can just put your name, or if you want to be silly, you can put something silly there. October is just like this is being made now. how to play but we don't know how to get on on there the pin is five nine three um so if you don't have an app you can just go to kahoot.it um and then it should pull this up where the game pin will be there to type in Nice job. Last question. 
question. Oh, this. All right, modern day cats are directly related to which wild cat species? Um, you can see that 
he or she is short and compact body-wise. They have a round head as opposed to the triangular head that the Warren has. It has short stubby legs, broad shoulders, and a short tail. And these guys are compact um, and stocky, if you will, because they endure cold environments. So um, some coffee examples. The American short hair, um, that's where we will start. Um, they have medium cubby build with a variety of coat colors. They're a working cat who have a strong hunting instinct and they are affectionate social cats. Next we have the very cute Burman. Um, they're known for their companionship dating back to Burmese monks keeping them as pets in the ancient temples of Burma. Um, Burmans are born white and develop their point pattern as they age keeping their paws white. And they have bright, beautiful blue eyes that are unique to the breed. Um, they are gentle cats, but have a strong sense of curiosity. Next, we have a similar rag doll. Um, I'm sure you all have heard why they get their name. Um, I do you? I what haven't. Is, oh, you don't know? Awesome. Um, they're called rag dolls because when you pick them up, they generally go limp like a doll. Um, so they're, they're known, yeah, just to kind of flail around. <laughs> um, so they are a combination of Burman, Angora, Persian, and Siamese breeds. Um, they're fairly large cats with, as you can tell, pretty long hair. Um, and they tend not to jump or uh, climb and are very relaxed with docile natures. Then we get into the funky facial features. Um, this is the exotic short hair. Um, he resembles a Persian, but has a smaller body and shorter fur. Um, sometimes the exotic is called a Persian in pajamas. <laughs> this breed enjoys human companionship and is relatively quiet. Um, the breed is known uh, to have a kidney disease, unfortunately. It's pretty prone to that. What's the name? Kid kidney. Not, not good. They're just prone to it for whatever reason. Genetics. And then one of my favorites, uh, the Maine Coon. Um, it's a large cat with a coat meant to withstand harsh cold wind or weather. Um, the Maine Coons have a shaggy, silky coat and a bushy tail. They are known for being a family cat and it is highly intelligent and gets along well with humans and other pets. So cool. And then finally, our Persian cats. Um, for whatever reason, they are the top registered breed in the United States. Um, known for their long, luxurious coat, and they require a ton of grooming and care. Um, this cat has a unique appearance with its flat muzzle and face, and they are also wonderful family pets, as they are calm nature. So moving on to foreign body types, we can tell the difference between their slender, muscular body, their triangular head. Hopefully you can tell the difference, um, but it's more pronounced. Um, they have way longer legs and a long tail. Um, and they are probably this uh, slender because they have to endure more um, the hotter environments. So it helps them um, deal with that. So some examples of foreign um, cat breeds. We'll start with Oriental. Um, which originated from the Siamese breed, but can have a variety of colors. It's known for its prominent ears and expressive face. This cat bonds closely to its owner and is very vocal. It needs exercise and stimulation to keep this curious breed happy. Next, we'll talk about the Sphinx. Well, I've never seen one in person, but I'm sure we've all seen them before um, somewhere <laughs> or another. Uh, they're a Canadian breed. Um, that originated from a hairless mutation in their genes. So they're not actually meant to be hairless, but they have a type of hair called velus. Um, and the skin requires regular maintenance and is needed to manage buildup of skin oils. Um, they are sensitive to cold and sun, so um, they are kind of <laughs> more work because you have to put sunscreen on them, make them wear coats. <laughs> so, I mean, if that floats your boat, they're kind of different looking. Uh, next, we have the Siamese, and it's arguably the oldest breed of cat originating from Thailand. Um, these cats are known for their 
wider body and face with darker points on the tips of their ears, nose, tail, and feet. They have a strong need to play and interact with humans. And um, if you guys ever heard a Siamese cat meow, it's so loud and constant. <laughs> so that's something that they are known for, being very vocal. Um, our Abyssinians are um, an oriental cat that also originated from the Siamese breed, but they can have a variety of colors. Also known for its prominent ears and expressive face, um, bonds closely to its owners, very vocal as well, and the oriental needs exercise and stimulation also. <laughs> so this leads me to our last activity. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some pictures and I want you guys to say that body type or breed identification um, we might have to play around with this. I know there's only three of us, um, but I was wondering if we want to just say one, two, three and have everybody shout it, or if we want to do it by each individual, unless that would make you guys uncomfortable. What do you guys think? Um, the, the, everybody all at once, or one at a time? Should we try everybody all at once, just to kind of warm up? I guess. Okay, are you guys okay with that, Abigail and Ava? Oh, Abigail left. Ava, is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. So I will just say one, two, three, and if you know it, shout it. I just want everybody to have a chance to answer the questions. So here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so what do you guys think this is? Hobby or foreign? Foreign. One, foreign. two, three. Foreign. foreign. Awesome. Okay. And then do you know the type of breed? One, two, three. Sphinx. Sphinx. Good job. All right. Is this hobby or foreign? One, two, three. Hobby. 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 Why is that? Um, it has a round head, a short tail, and it has, it's not like slender. Yes. Exactly. Ava, do you know what kind of breed it is? No, I don't. Do you know? It starts with a B, I think. It starts with an R. It's a type of cat that kind of goes limp. Oh, the red dog. Oh. Red dog. Great job. Oh. All right. Hobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Hobby. 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 Great job. Um, do any of you guys know which breed this is? Um, this is your American short hair. Oh. Hobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Foreign. Foreign. This one's kind of a close one. Maybe it looks like a mix between the two, but it's a Siamese cat, um, so it is foreign. Hobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Foreign. Uh, top, top, I got the one. Ava was right. I, I, I knew it. <laughs> Do you guys know the breed? Maine oh. Coon. Maine Coon. Yes, they're so stoic. All right. Hobby versus is foreign. One, two, three. Hobby. 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 Great job. Do you guys know this breed? It was the one I showed you before the ragdolls. No, that's the one you thought Spanx. it was before. Spanx. No, it's the one you thought. Oh, uh, They're from a place called Burma. Oh, uh, the Burma. Mm -hmm. Burma. The Burma. Great job. I know, I kind of threw a lot of those actually at once. That's okay. Okay, hobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Foreign. 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 Great job. Uh, this one's kind of a weird one. Do you know? What the breed is? Um, uh, that one is. Oh, 
It's <laughs> the Abyssinian. I've actually never seen this type of cat, I don't think. So I don't blame you guys either. All right. Cobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Cobby. 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 Exactly right. And I also get confused between these ones. Do you know the breed? It looks like another one that I mentioned. Starts with a P. Oh, no. <laughs> Close. It's a Persian. <laughs> That's okay. I just want you guys to get familiarized with them. Where's one I think we're almost done to uh, Cubby versus Foreign. One, two, three. Foreign. Foreign for sure. Because look at those ears. Uh, if you guys know what breed this is. Starts with an O. Oh. Oriental. Oriental. Great job. Cobby versus foreign. One, two, three. Cobby? This one's kind of a tough one. Cobby. I think I did. Oh, I think Cobby. I think my <laughs> student worker put this one in here and I didn't see it. And we didn't actually talk about this one. Oh. Uh, so this is a Bengal. Whoever said that earlier. What the Bengal cat looks like, kind of like um, the ancestor that we thought it was from. Copy versus foreign. One, two, three. Copy. Copy. Do you guys know which one this is?